Hello watch enthusiasts! Now as the days start to get longer, more and more of us are going to venture outside. And so as a result, a year and a, and a bit on actually from my last video on this subject, I'd like to talk about the best value field watches. And field watches incorporate a great deal in terms of being, being as durable and as legible as a, a full-on uh, dive watch or something of that type, but with a slightly more subtle styling and a smaller size, which will make them more wearable on, on more occasions. And so as a result, today I'd like to talk about the, vet, the best value options on the market, which really do take advantage of modern technology and new features to still appear stylish and interesting, but retain the functionality that we expect. However, before I begin the video, I would of course like to encourage you all to join the Watch Guys, which is my group on Snups, which is a platform where you can share pictures of your collections and interests, and where you can join the 9,500 other members who are already posting on, on the Watch Guys, which is my group. In terms of uh, watch questions, pictures of your 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 own watches, and need to ask me or, or other uh, other enthusiasts any questions you might have, which I'll strive to answer personally. And so, if you'd like to to join that, then do follow the link down below. And for today's picture from that, we have this fantastic piece, which is this tremendous photograph of this Hamilton car key, which is the manually wound, wound version of this watch, and in fact featured in last year's video on this theme. But indeed, this year I've decided to change things a bit. But it's, it remains a tremendous piece, and one which often offers really brilliant value, as far as a very slim and, and remarkably elegant piece goes, with all the sporting heritage and, and necessary features that you would expect from a field watch. Now the first watch I'd like to talk about fulfills all the criteria for a basic field watch, which I can think of, in terms of being robust, but also a watch which won't get in the way, and will really slip under a cuff without you uh, having to worry about the watch at all during its use, and then will be there when you need it to tell the time, which I think is the most you can ask of one of these watches, especially at this price range. And so this first watch I'd like to talk about is the very modest Marathon General Purpose Quartz. And this is a timepiece which has been used by the US, um, the US forces in terms of, uh, of their military force for a while now, and the brand has become a, a favourite, really, of, of military operators, because it simply is a piece which is, is extremely durable and very functional. And this is a piece which, despite the fact that it's being worn by soldiers, is only 34mm in diameter, with a 40mm lug-to-lug -lug distance, which appears small at first, but what one has to remember with this watch is it's designed to slip away under a cuff or a sleeve without any concern, and to simply be a watch which won't uh, won't obstruct the user and won't get in the way, which in many ways is exactly what you need because this will be a piece that will be bumped, and so as a result a smaller size will protect it, whilst a very large dial to body ratio means there's less case to bump, but more dial to read. And the case of this timepiece is in fact a type of, uh, a type of resin rather than being steel, and this may at first appear counterintuitive in terms of offering a case which may not be seen as, a, uh, as durable as the equivalent steel case, but the idea of this case is that it will absorb shocks and bumps, and, and is also a, um, a sacrificial section of the watch. So that's to say, when it's serviced, the case will be replaced, rather than having a case which will get bumped up and damaged over time that can't be replaced without, uh, without changing the watch entirely. And this does, I think, work very well with the concept of this watch as being extremely durable. And that continues with the idea of having these, um, these fixed lug bars, whereby there's a, a single bar straight through the lugs, which means there's no danger of, of snapping a spring bar and losing the watch, which is again something else which can be a concern. The dial of the watch also proves extremely useful in terms of providing a, a very legible and clear layout, because it has a military style of design with the 12 hours and the 24 hours on the dial in matte black, which, uh, which reduces the amount of reflections underneath the acrylic crystal, which is far more shock resistant than sapphire or mineral, mineral glass, though of course is more prone to scratches. And the dial is, is as I've said, matte black with these markings, but also features tritium, uh, tritium indices. So those are, are made out of uh, hydrogen 3, which is a, a particular isotope which happens to, to glow in the dark when, when, um, when put over a base of, of sulphur due to the, the fact that the, the beta particles released excite the surface of the sulphur and thus release light. And this allows the, the, the watch to, to glow, really, for as long as its half-life is, without the, the issue of things like normal superluminova, which require an external source of light to, um, to, to, to illuminate their, their surface, which will then release light over a certain number of hours, whereas this can be used in pitch darkness for its entire life and still remain legible, which is a remarkable feature and, and something very, very useful, especially for someone who's going to be using this in, for example, uh, in, for example caves, like a speleologist. And the movement is a quartz movement, but it's a, a Swiss-made high-torque uh, quartz movement with a, 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 an end-of-life display, which means the second hand will tick uh, with, uh, with larger intervals in order to, to show the fact that it's low on battery, which is extremely useful, again, if you're going to be using this watch to know when it's about to run out of battery, to not use it, or at least replace the battery beforehand, not be left in a difficult situation. 
And so overall, for £165 to £170, depending on whether you get the date or not, I think this is a remarkable option as far as a, a very rugged and durable piece, which will provide you uh, a lot of uh, safe use over time. The next watch I'd like to talk about takes on a far more formal approach, but whilst changing a few things about the, the traditional field watch, which I feel are for the best. And this is the Unimatic Modulo Due, and this is a piece which is an Italian field watch, produced by a, quite a small manufacturer, but which does feature a very reliable Seiko NH35 movement. But that's not really the most interesting part of this watch. The most interesting part of this watch, in my eyes, is the case. And the case is 38.5mm, and it is anti-magnetic. And it's a fantastically unique design, because it's almost symmetrical from the side, in terms of its profile, whilst the, uh, the case curves over from the bottom and the top to reach its pointed lugs, and for some reason this reminds me of Panerai in a strange sort of way, but in a much more manageable 38.5mm. And the case is extremely utilitarian in its most basic design, because it's bead blasted with this, this, uh, this extended bezel which protects the crystal rather well. It's also got, uh, got lug holes, which are extremely useful for, for changing straps quickly and easily, without the hassle of trying to get a, a spring bar tool in between a nylon strap and the case, which is often a very difficult process, with nylon due to its, its hard surface, whereas with leather, for example, it's much easier. Also, the crown has been very well considered, because it's not guarded, but it features such a wide profile that I doubt that a, a knock would really have much effect on it. And this, of course, means that it's, it's usable with gloves, for example, or indeed simply uh, when you're, you're trying to, to, to use the, uh, the, the, the crown whilst, uh, whilst in a, an, a badly lit, lit place or somewhere where you can't quite see what you're doing. This does add to the functionality. And then, of course, the, the, the dial itself is housed underneath this fantastic double-domed sapphire crystal which extends out and provides a wonderful covering to this, uh, this dial. And courtesy of the fact that this, this crystal is, in fact, 2.7mm thick, and is, uh, is anti-reflective uh, coated. This allows the, the dial to, to appear extremely uh, easily in the eye of the viewer, and due to the fact that it is very well loomed, it is extremely legible. Furthermore, the large crown and thick crystal allow this watch to be water-resistant 300 meters, meaning that you could very realistically dive with this watch with no concerns whatsoever, making it a fantastic all-rounder as far as a watch goes, in terms of being sleek and, and quite futuristic in its styling, whilst having a distinct retro vibe to it, but also being a genuine tool watch in its resistance to the elements. I'd also like the touch that this watch includes military hand gestures on the case back, as sort of a nod to the, the heritage of this watch in terms of its, uh, its, 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 its concept at its most basic form. And so I think as a whole package, this is a piece which is very interesting for a buyer in terms of offering a serviceable movement and, uh, and also a, a very interesting package with regards to the case, dial and finishing. And it is worth noting these watches generally come in limited editions, and this is just the way the brand works and they do generally produce limited editions of these watches at different price ranges depending on how few there are being made. But the base price for this watch is £385 for this timepiece, whilst uh, prices for the more limited versions of, um, of 200 or 50 pieces tend to cost a bit more. But as a, a general base, I would say £385 makes this watch remarkably good value, bearing in mind the, the case build, and indeed the, the elegance for the design as a whole. Now the next watch is a piece which isn't on paper a field watch, it's a pilot's watch, and it's the new Damasco DS30. And this is a piece which I, I believe offers tremendous value for money. And I made some mistakes on the last video speaking about this watch in terms of its case specifications, so I hope to rectify those in this video. But overall I think this is a tremendous piece which offers all the criteria that you would want in order to produce really an ideal field watch. Now the DS30 is a very well proportioned watch in my eyes, at 39mm in diameter by 9.95mm in thickness, making it very slim in terms of, in terms of a, a field watch or indeed a pilot's watch, but still with a reasonable size at 39mm, which will fit the vast majority of wrists, because it won't be overbearing for those with small wrists, but similarly will, will fill up a, a large wrist with ease. Now the mistake I made when I last talked about this watch was that I said that the case was their proprietary uh, ice-hardened nickel-free stainless steel. And that isn't the case, whereas the ice hard nickel free stainless steel is very resistant to scratches and bumps, but is, is susceptible to magnetism. The, the steel they've used here is very similar to the steel used by Zinn, which is submarine steel. And this is a type of steel which, whereas uh, far less susceptible to magnetism, is also extremely resistant to corrosion to, to stages and levels far beyond normal stainless steel, which is a real benefit for a watch like this, especially if you're going to use it as a field watch, because you'll want to be able to get the watch wet and, uh, and dirty without any concern for, um, for, for it, it, it being damaged. Additionally, it is hardened to, to give it a surface hardness, which will be significantly uh, harder than, than you would expect from 316L stainless steel. 
and this is comparable to their ice-hardened nickel-free stainless steel, making it a remarkably robust package. And for the price of this watch of £875, I think it's quite remarkable they're able to use technology like this, especially in a package like this which won't appeal to everyone and certainly isn't their flagship product. And the external resistance of the case doesn't end there, because this watch features a specially designed style of gasket or seal made by Viton, which are UV resistant and also very chemically resistant, which is excellent for a watch We're like this, which won't necessarily be used for great depths of, um, of swimming, but will have to resist the, the various, um, uh, various uh, temperature changes and also chemical changes around it, which I think is a remarkable touch and something, something very clever to incorporate into a watch of this price range. And this is also complemented by the fact that it has a self-lubricated crown, which is also hardened, which means that the crown won't uh, won't uh, suffer the same damage to its screw-down uh, areas, and indeed its um, its its uh, its tube, its crown tube, as you would normally find, which is again another benefit and something which helps the water resistance of this watch remain at 100 meters. And as this is a pilot's watch, this also does feature a crystal which is negative pressure resistant. So if the, the watch is, is, is subjected to low pressure, as well as high pressure, the crystal won't blow out, which is something uh, additionally functional. If you happen to take this watch in, in an aircraft, or use this as a pilot's watch, though for the purposes of this video it still provides a greater resistance to the elements, which is exactly what you would need. And this is combined with a dial which is about as clean as you can get them, with, well, while still incorporating a date. And we have a matte black dial with these incredibly legible uh, indices around its edge, with these very legible pilot's hands, which I think work extremely well to produce a watch which is clear to read, with a very large dial to body ratio, in order to make this watch, uh, watch easy to wear and easy to read at a glance. And whilst this watch's design may appear very spartan and, and, and clear, I personally find the idea of having those crosshairs on the dial, and simply having Damasco and Made in Germany on the dial, really a fantastic touch to make a very clean aesthetic, which in my eyes is a very beautiful aesthetic as well, keep bringing watches really back to their, their pure purpose, without any, um, any useless uh, additions to a, a simple timekeeper. Furthermore, the watch is shock-resistant and anti-magnetic, which again adds to its resistance um, to the elements, which helps protect the ETA-2836 inside it, which is um, again regulated by Damasco for this watch in particular. Um, to, to not be, uh, be affected by surroundings in terms of, of uh, things you can't perceive, or at least you can't predict, such as ma magnetic fields and indeed shocks, which will happen accidentally. And so I think for £875, this is an incredibly high-quality watch, with a remarkable amount of features which frankly challenge watches like the Tudor Heritage Ranger, which cost over twice as much as this watch. And in many ways, this watch doesn't feature the same luxurious aspects as those watches, but as far as a down-to-earth and clear field watch goes, this makes a remarkable option. Now the next watch is a piece which I included in a video about the best value GMT watches, but I feel as a, an exploring watch this watch truly is fulfilling its true purpose. And this is the Alpina Alpina GMT4, and this is a piece which is in my eyes an immensely good value option as far as a, um, a very well built and remarkably under the radar option for a GMT timepiece which also fulfills the criteria of a field watch. And at base, this is a 44mm timepiece, with very short lugs, which are these, these lyre or twisted style lugs, which do resemble some Omega offerings, but in many ways the, the way these have been built is very different, and does offer a very different aesthetic, with much, uh, much uh, stubbier lugs, which are, are thicker as well, and provide a very different cut into them for that beautiful polished bevel. And overall, this does look like a very, very luxurious timepiece to, to see, especially from its aesthetics, and as well as, as that it's built. And the watch itself is water resistant to 100 meters, and is, is anti-magnetic and shock resistant as per the specifications that Alpina put forward. Additionally, this watch is really very much designed to be a watch for mountaineers or explorers, rather than travellers in the same way as a normal GMT watch. And this is seen first of all in the bezel. And the bezel is graduated from 0 to 36 as a, a type of compass bezel, which you can use in conjunction with the GMT hand to be able to figure out your bearings, which is a remarkably useful feature and one which is difficult to use with simply a three-hand watch, but becomes far easier with a GMT hand. And the dial of this watch either comes in a sunburst very dark anthracite uh, grey, or indeed a sunburst silver, which are both extremely attractive options, and, and I think the, the choice very much comes down to the individual, though of course the anthracite will always be the more legible of the two options and both of them feature luminescence on the hands, the, the dial, and also on the GMT hand to, to aid reading this watch in the dark. And the dials are extremely nicely levelled with different uh, different sections and 24-hour markings around the edge of that, uh, that, that rehort around the edge of the dial, which is extremely useful again for keeping that second time zone. 
But in truth, it's really the movement of this watch which is impressive for the £1,880 that this watch is listed as, though in fact you can get hold of this watch for significantly less than that if you look around. And the movement of this watch is a very, very curious piece, because it's been declared as an in-house movement, but looking at its architecture, it does follow the lines of an ETA movement very closely. However, it's in the functionality of this watch which it becomes impressive. And this is because a great deal of ETA-based uh, based style uh, GMT watches have the same problem. And this problem is very much to do with the way their hands operate. Because with these watches you set the, the, the three hands, like a normal watch, from one position of the crown, and then the GMT hand separately. And the problem with this is that if you're travelling between time zones, that, um, that means that you have to set your current time on the GMT hand, otherwise you have to change all the hands in order to set it, which is irritating and does defeat the object of the exercise of quickly being able to change your time zone. So this watch has the complication of having a GMT hand which operates with the minute hand and the second hand as that primary time setting area, but then as you jump between time zones you can set the hour hand independently, which makes an extremely useful and, and very practical option for this timepiece. And whilst Alpina is often discounted as a brand which is unfortunately rebought and uh, and indeed is seen to not compete with brands such as um, such as the luxury brands or indeed the mid-range brands just due, due to a lack of heritage in many people's eyes, having handled this watch, I can genuinely say that the, the quality and the the elegance of the design is really excellent, down to the detailing on the dial, the the almost retro-styled uh, knurled edge on that bezel to the beautiful polishing and brushing around the case and the fantastically embossed case back and the quality of the crown, which really all are, are, are excellent. In addition to this, the watch comes on either a steel bracelet with a polished centre link and a very nice tapering effect to uh, alternatively a, uh, a, an alligator style strap, which I think adds a, a more dressy air to this watch, though personally I would say it's worth buying it with the bracelet so that if you do change your mind and do want to wear it on the bracelet you can put it back on that if you want to use it as a, a true sports watch in its, its truest sense, due to the intention of this watch to be a, a, a very serious explorer's timepiece. Now the final watch in this video is perhaps predictable, but I feel this is a watch which offers, for a start, fantastic legibility, excellent resistance to the elements, uh, fantastic styling, and also accuracy which is, isn't really comparable to anything else in this video. And this is the new Omega Railmaster, and that's to say not the, the limited edition uh, 1957 version, but rather the modern equivalent. And this watch I feel captures the Railmaster much better than any of, uh, of the other recreations made in the past, because this watch remains a 40mm watch with a fully brushed stainless steel case with those same twisted lugs, which I think looks absolutely gorgeous. Additionally, it, uh, it does feature a, a very nicely designed crown, which is, is beautifully manufactured to appear like an onion crown, but still provide a watch resistance, which is frankly remarkable. The watch also strikes a wonderful balance between a luxury dress watch with its, its curved edges, its um, very delicate satinized finish, and its, its nicely domed crystal with, in addition to that, a, a, a very attractive style of, um, of sports watch aesthetic, with that highly legible dial, and indeed those twisted lugs which are reminiscent of the sporting Omega Seamasters, which again are, are more bulky than this watch, but certainly do still hold their own in terms of an elegant finish and an elegant design which Omega has maintained all these years. And this watch also features a very attractive dial, which again is a very nice balance between the Seamaster and a dress watch, with slim hands which are luminescent, but also with a, um, a lollipop style of second hand, which works very well. And then we have no date and this um, this style of crosshair dial, with the, the four numerals around the dial, with, uh, with painted indices rather than applied ones, to appear more delicate and more simple. And this watch comes in at several hundred pounds less than a Seamaster Aquaterra. However, I feel this watch, as far as a field watch, is a superior timepiece, because the Aquaterra is really designed to be a hybrid between a dress watch and a, and a dive watch for someone who wants an everyday timepiece. Whereas I feel this watch with its fully brushed case, more delicate sizing, and uh, an easily used crown, is perhaps a better option with, with, as well as having more potent luminescence. Also, what is undeniable is that this watch will be more collectible in the long run than the Aquaterra. This watch is an extremely sought-after version, and indeed is, is such a historical model in, in the, the Omega line, that I feel it would be a real miss to not get this watch if you're considering this over an Aquaterra. And the watch is very resistant to the elements as well, with a, a double anti-reflective coated uh, sapphire crystal, as well as 150 meter watch resistance, which is achieved without the use of a screw-down crown, with a simple push-pull crown, which is quite impressive. 
and as well as that it is anti-magnetic to the full 15,000 gauss, which makes this watch an unbelievably anti-magnetic watch to a, a stage where actually a, a cage style of, um, of anti-magnetic watch such as the Rolex Milgauss simply can't compete. And then internally it has a fantastic movement, which is to say the 8806 movement from Omega, which is a, a METAS certified uh, master coaxial chronometer, which is in fact their highest rating of, um, of chronometer. Um, from Omega in terms of its uh, its resistance to the elements and its its uh, insurance that the timekeeping won't be affected by the elements, because it's true that one can say that a watch can be accurate to uh, to say plus one second a day, but the real test is whether it can maintain that sort of accuracy, which is what makes these watches so impressive. And as well as that, you do get a 55 hour power reserve and the fantastic coaxial escapement, which allows the the watch to um, to have far less resistance and and friction on the escapement which gives it longer service intervals, which is again a fantastic thing to be able to, to get hold of for this price. And so at the top end, or the luxurious end of the field style of watch, I feel this watch is a, is a tremendous option and a very useful one in terms of the features it offers, whilst giving you a watch which really does have um, have value over time, and does give you something which, which uh, exhibits beautiful craftsmanship, as well as this resistance to the elements. And the price for this watch is £3,600, which is certainly not, not a, a cheap price by any means, but it does offer you a great deal for the money, and something which is very different to what other people are wearing at the moment, as this watch has only been out for a few months now. And of course the watch is available either on a bracelet, or indeed this style of fabric strap, um, or a, a leather pass-through strap, which are all attractive options, though again I would, I would uh, advise buying it on the bracelet first of all, and then being able to change that out. And it is worth noting the fact that the, the dial of this watch comes in two variants, either the black brush dial, which is my personal preference and will likely be the most popular option, or a silver version, which again is attractive, but personally doesn't give the legibility that I like in this timepiece. But either way, you really are getting a heck of a lot of watch, and a beautifully built piece of design. And so with this, I'd like to conclude this video here, but do leave your comments down below as to what you thought of these, uh, these options, and if there are any other options which uh, you thought I should have included. Um, and indeed, I did include quite a few options, such as the Seiko Alpinist in last year's video, but I thought I should try something a bit different this year, in terms of offering a different option on the market, and something which, uh, which offers something to a slightly different market as well. So thank you very much for watching, if you did enjoy the video then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and to be able to enjoy more content here in the future. So thank you very much for watching, this is Arm on the Watch Guy, over and out.